your Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Obviously, it's been quite some time since we've had the opportunity to talk to you. First of all, can you take us through what happened on that play that led to your major injury? Uh, yeah, I mean, kind of just fell awkwardly on my arm. I mean, I don't know if it was awkward or not, but I uh, just felt something and knew something was wrong. And um, unfortunately, it was as bad as it was. So uh, definitely a tough tough thing to happen and just how tough has this year been you know spending most of the time rehabbing playing only 20 games that mental side of it what what has this been like for you yeah I think very tough uh physically mentally everything so um it's hard not being out there with the guys uh win and lose and going through it with them so um definitely makes you realize some things and uh, can't take things for granted and makes you appreciate stuff. So um, learn from it and, and have a new, I guess not new, but more of a, a realization and appreciation of everything that we, we have. And um, for me just now, I think just trying to get healthy and be the best player I can be come September, October. You've been on the ice a little bit. Um, where are you in terms of, you know, being able to get back if you if you guys were still playing? Where are you in your recovery process? Yeah, I think, uh, like, like you said, I've, I've been skating and stuff, so um, the plan was kind of to target playoffs, and um, unfortunately, mm-hmm. we don't really have that chance, so... Um, yeah, so it's... So you were close, is what you're... What yeah, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did you, do you feel well enough if the team did make it that you could jump in and play? Next? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say because uh, we're not there. So, uh, like I said, I've been skating, and um, once we kind of realized there was no chance, things changed So um, with rehab and whatnot. So... Um, would have been different uh, the last couple of weeks, I guess, had we been in the in it. So, how tough is it for you to, to you know have to watch from the sidelines? Is you know they, they didn't exactly replicate last year's success? Yeah, I mean, definitely hard. I think hard year for everyone. Um, definitely hard for me, just feeling like I could help and not being able to. So. Um, Definitely not easy, uh, not being able to be there for your team and, like I said, going through with them and um, tough, tough uh, season for us. So, uh, like I said, everyone will be working hard to, to get better for next year and uh, we kind of had that feeling last year compared to this year and um, it's a lot of motivation to, to be able to try to replicate what we had compared to what we had this year. Doug, you, you weren't playing when, uh, you know, Lindy was relieved and then Travis came in. What was just your reaction to that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was hard for me. I was kind of disconnected at that point. Um, so I don't really have much to say, honestly. Uh, just not really being in the meetings and stuff, practices and whatnot. And um, I can tell you a lot about the weight room and <laughs> what goes on in there. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so I don't really have much to say about it. What kind of coach do you do you look for when you know looking at this team, and what do you think that the qualities that person needs to make this team get back to the playoffs next year? Yeah, I mean that's not my job. I, I'm here to play, and um, somebody somebody else will figure that out, and I'll do my best and do my best to be a good teammate and player. When you, when you were injured, uh, Shimon was the player that came up. Just your thoughts on. Um, his presence, what he brought to the team, and, and Luke as well, two rookies that kind of had to go in running pretty much. Yeah, I think uh, 
they did great. So um, obviously a bright future for for them and for our team, and um, kind of look back to when I was that age and stuff. So um, it's obviously a great experience for them to to be able to play so much at a, at a young age, and um, it's only going to help them. I think that the full summer is going to be a long time, obviously, until you get back on the ice. How much are you anticipating getting back out there in the fan support for your return? Yeah, I didn't think about it too much about that. I think just uh, it was definitely hard skating, and obviously you want that feeling. And um, Like you said, it's kind of getting so close and um, hoping to you know, be back this season and um, not being able to. I think it's, like you said, now hard to kind of you know, got to wait five more months or whatever. So um, I'll definitely be very, very excited come October. Doug, even in the first 20 games, the team wasn't connecting and firing on all cylinders when, when you were here. What was happening? Because at that moment, it was like, okay, what's this year going to be like? Uh, so just wondering what it, what it was like and what you viewed was happening or not. Yeah, it's... Uh, Feels like a long time ago now, but um, I don't think we ever had our full lineup, which maybe we had one game or I'm not sure, but uh, I do remember when Nico came back, how much our team changed. And unfortunately, I think I was like, played, I don't know how many games with him. So uh, when he came back and um, so definitely hard with injuries and whatnot, but it's not an excuse as well, so, um, yeah. <laughs> what, was, what was the recipe for such an effective power play that you guys exhibited those first 20 games? Um, I think it was over 30% from what I remember. Why was it doing so well at that time? And obviously you played a big part in that, but overall, why do you think it played? It was doing so well? I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not sure. Clock's going in that, and 30% of the time, and that's what happens. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I don't want to put words in your mouth, so yeah, we'll stick with that. <laughs> when you initially suffered your injury, did you know immediately that it was going to be a longer-term thing? Uh, I knew something was wrong. I didn't really know what. Uh, kind of didn't never felt that before so I knew it wasn't great and uh, yeah then I guess when you look up you know timelines of what the injury was and stuff it's kind of hits you hard but um, always hoping that you would be ahead of schedule and whatnot but uh, yeah here we are so it is what it is I think for me I was just trying to take one day at a time and do my best and work as hard as I can and um, I hope you guys are enjoying today's bonus episode. Before we continue, let me tell you about FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA, and NHL baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all in an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. This is now your second year. What do you sort of take of the strides that this team made as a whole? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge difference, I think, from this year to last year. And um, I think pretty crazy, obviously, to see the growth that we, we had. And um, like you said, obviously very disappointing that we're, we're done and we're not still playing, but um, very proud of what we accomplished this year as a team. And uh, I think you look back and kind of reflect on the season, the start of the year and stuff we were talking about and to kind of see what we accomplished and you know the good, the good memories and win streak and the records and team records and all that stuff. So. Uh, I think we have a lot to to be proud of. Do you see the foundation here for success this deep in the year, year after year? Yeah, of course. I think uh, I mean, 
guys are so young and uh, hungry to get better, so um, there's no reason why why we can't keep getting better and, um, and be fighting for the Stanley Cup every year. Tell you, what do you think of uh, Lindy as a coach and how he was able to manage the veterans mixed in with a lot of the young players here this season and what he's been able to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, there's... He was great, so um, I don't really think about that kind of stuff too much. But uh, I mean, it was a great year. He's nominated for Coach of the Year, and um, and he, yeah, it was great for us. So, um, like I said, I don't really think about like that kind of thing. I just worry about players, and um, but yeah, it's all good. Dougie, what was the most valuable thing as a group, as a whole, you would have learned from those five games against Carolina? Okay, so say it again. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, what do you think the most valuable thing as a group you guys have learned, particularly guys who were in the playoffs for the first time, from that series against Carolina in particular? Yeah, I mean, take a lot from the whole playoffs, I think, and... Uh, it was two different teams, I think, mm -hmm. different styles of game, and um, you know, like things got to go your way, and uh, a lot of things have to go your way to keep winning, and it's tough to win, obviously. So, um, I mean, I know Carolina's game pretty well, and we had a few guys that know it well, and we knew what to expect, and um, they're they're a good team, and and played really well, so. Um, Obviously, we weren't we weren't good enough. Dougie, you, you've talked about you know the shortcomings that you kind of had in the playoffs. Uh, just what are you going to work on this summer to kind of try to cancel that out? Next season? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what shortcomings or whatever, but um, always just you know try to do your best and uh, yeah. Are you, are you staying in Jersey again this summer? Uh, I don't know yet. What did what did you see from Luke in, in the brief time that he was up, and where do you think he's headed? Yeah, I mean, same as everybody else saw, I think, uh, just being young and so talented and he's got so much uh, room to grow and get better and um, and he's already so good. So um, it's going to be a huge, huge part of our team and uh, excited to see what he can do and what he can become and um, it's very exciting for, for everyone. You were able to have a big year offensively. You broke Scott Stevens' uh, single season uh, goals record, and obviously you're an offensive mind defenseman. And uh, what can we expect uh, come next year? And what are some of the ways you're going to elevate your game? And what areas do you uh, do? You, are you going to try to improve on to try to better yourself entering year three of your contract? Yeah, I mean, just try to get better. I think uh, every year work on different things, try to get better and uh, try to have a better season than the season prior. So um, I think that doesn't change for me. I'm never happy with, with where I'm at. I always want to get better and um, I want to keep doing that. And now, while we're on the subject of sports and competition, like we always are on this show, let me tell you about Monopoly Go. All right, game off. We got to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that. But there is just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends or time tournaments where you can work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you can unlock. And there's so much to do. You can get unique stickers when you trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes, cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Uh, trust me, I think you would love this a lot. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or a Robot Pinchinko Machine. That sounds pretty cool. And there's always new timed events to help you win big, like massive multiplayers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download right now for free on Google Play or App Store. Game on, everybody. All right, let's get back to today's bonus episode. 
take it away once again. Obviously, a year for you where you dealt with an extensive injury, but overall, what has your experience like been for your first year of a long contract where you know you're you're setting yourself up for your future here? Uh, yeah, I mean it's always hard right right now to talk about stuff when you haven't really digested it all, but um, <clears throat> there's so many uh, really positive things that. Um, I've loved this year, and obviously we uh, we need to get better as a team, and uh, I want to play better and uh, help the team and, and all that stuff. So um, all that stuff, but um, just talking about New Jersey and the city and uh, the team, the staff, and uh, everyone around the rink and everything, it, it's been great. So um, I'm really happy with all that. Do you think that when you came back from injury, it took a while to sort of find your footing and all that. And do you sort of see a difference between your play prior to and after? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, I don't know if I ever felt the same, uh, I mean, as the start of the season. And um, I don't, I can't really pinpoint exactly what it was with mm -hmm. my jaw, being out, different things, some injuries after. Um, coming back, stuff like that, where um, I just never, never felt like the start. So um, it's hard. I, I think at that point, with there's no real time to mm -hmm. um, figure it out, and just trying to do your best and keep going. And um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel the same after coming back for sure. Do you feel that with a summer coming up, like? You have no doubt that you can get back to like what you felt like at the beginning. Yeah, of the for day. sure. I think it's, uh, it's a time thing. Yeah, I got um, put a plan together now to fix everything and um, some stuff that was bothering me and figure it all out and um, and I'll, I'll be ready for for next season for sure. How's your jaw now? Like, what sort of? Yeah, it's. Uh, um, Still not normal. Uh, I don't know when it'll be normal. I have some nerve problems and um, numbness still in my lip and my teeth and not feeling all that stuff. But um, so and chewing and stuff like that's a little different. But um, otherwise, it's 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 better. Yeah. What do you take from this season as a collective group that you know says to you? okay, these are the next steps we have to take, and it's almost non-negotiable that we have to take those steps. Yeah, I think uh, there's definitely some stuff. Um, I think for me it's coming from winning, winning team, and uh, we really need to create a, a better culture, a winning culture, and there's a lot of things that go into that, but um, to try to get to that and... Um, it becomes a standard in the, in the mm -hmm. room and around the organization and everything. And um, I think we really need to, to try uh, to get to that as, as quickly as we can. And um, I think there's some steps we took this year, but I think there's definitely more we need to take and um, to get to that point. We were talking to Gravy earlier on, and we were saying how, you know, a first year coming into a team it's almost like that second year is when you feel a lot more comfortable and like you can be more of who you are. Do you feel that way? Because this year is so much about the feeling out process. Yeah, I think so for sure. It's, uh, I guess for me too, I kind of halfway mark and I was out for yeah. two months. So it's, it was a little tough for me. You kind of, when you're starting to be with the guys every day and then it kind of gets taken away and then, um, you're a little, like starting over a little bit when you're missing out, and it's always it's always hard when you're not part of the group and going through the battles and stuff yeah. with them. So, um, but yeah, for sure, I think next year will be better. Um, I think just adding to different things, um, knowing guys, guys knowing you, what you're like, and um, definitely is much easier. What's a summer like for Dougie Hamilton? Um, just working for me I think it's uh I've never like satisfied with my game especially how this season ended for me and mm -hmm. um for me I'm just I'm hungry for to get better 
get healthy and then um, get better. So um, I got fuel right now. I'm, I want to get get going right away, and um, hopefully I can do that. Do you do you ever watch the playoffs when you're not in them? And is that a hard thing to do as someone who competes in that league? Yeah, it is hard. It's uh, I don't know. It's when you're. I feel like when you're, I don't know, being in the playoffs, it's a little different. You're kind of in there, you're, you feel tighter to it. Um, this season a little harder when you're, you don't feel as connected to kind of that, that battle that they're in, but um, I'll for sure check in for a bit and then we'll see after that. But um, it's always interesting to, to see what happens. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Amanda. Do we have anything further for Dougie? Thank you, Dougie. Ooh, you're welcome.